certainly silver is a critical commodity needed for worldwide economic development. In fact, our experts report that worldwide demand for silver is rapidly increasing as silver plays a vital role in the expanding economies of the 21st century. As president of the Silver Institute, I've gone to China uh, as part of a, a major conference that, uh, that the Silver Institute has had for the last five years in China. And I don't remember the specific statistics, but the demand for silver within China has grown exponentially over the course of the past five years. And, uh, you know, that economy uh, is it's just remarkable, the growth that's happening uh, across the, that country where people are going from, uh, well, we had a guide who grew up on it with a dirt floor. And he now has a, you know, he lives in a house that's three stories and they have indoor plumbing and, you know, all the things that we have in the, in the Western world, they're starting to get there. We have China, which has been economically oppressed for so long, and now they're booming. So that Chinese people, historically, I mean, relatively recently, like a few years ago, used about 1 70th the amount of silver per person than the person in the United States does. And if China begins to use 70 times more silver per person, industrial demand will about triple. And industrial land is already consuming more silver than we're mining today. Their emergence as a major manufacturing force with tremendous uh, growth in industrial activity, huge infrastructure investment in China and things like railways, electric, electric generation, all of this is very metal intensive and uh, with a huge uh, uh, also shift in, in the manufacturing activity for electronic products, even things like televisions, um, uh, air conditioners, a um, uh, great deal of this production now occurs uh, in China and uh, microwave ovens and uh, you tend to use a lot of uh, uh, metals in all of these manufactured uh, goods and uh, I think that really has propelled their importance in terms of the metal industry around the world. Uh, I am uh, very very much of the view that Asia growth in demand is, is, is just beginning. Uh, you know, there's 1.3 billion Chinese, there's a billion Indians, there's, there's 200 million in Indonesia. I mean, it's a vast source of demand for all metals, not just, not just silver. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an economy, basically, that is, is moving from an agricultural economy to an industrial economy. Their consumption of most metals is a tiny fraction of what it is in North America. Even if they went to only 1 50th or 1 40th of our consumption per capita, that still represents a huge increase in demand pretty much across the board for silver, for gold, for lead, for zinc, for nickel, and so forth. When you consider that there are probably millions and millions and millions of people in China, they don't have refrigerators, they don't have air conditioners in their homes, they don't have a lot of things that we take for granted here in the, in the United States, they don't have lighting, um, and as their standard of, of living rises, they want these products. It's going to make life more comfortable for them. And these are just everyday aspects of, of life, or aspects of everyday life that, that we deal with. And you look at what we've uh, consumed here in this country, and it's not going to be any different in those countries if the standards of living continue to rise. And so, uh, you know, electric motors, uh, cellular telephones, computers, uh, uh, you know, water purification in China and India is probably more of an issue there than it has ever been here. Uh, and the ability to use silver for filtration of water and purification of, of nearly everything that we deal with, coatings, uh, uh, whether it's in restaurant, kitchens, and things of that sort, or, surg or, or surgical rooms, operating rooms, and hospitals, as an antimicrobial, it's a very effective uh, product for that. And you're going to have all of that built in China if this continues, uh, you know, for you know, for many, many, many uh, generations. It's a secular event. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event of people moving from the villages and the countryside into cities, needing housing, needing, uh, co needing all the uh, periphery around housing, the, the, the utilities, the apartments, the, uh, the, the plumbing, the wiring, and so forth, and all of that uses metals. Uh, and it's, it's not by any means over. There, there's, there's, there's a large new middle class in China, but they are still, they are still uh, very much less developed than, than anything like America or, or Canada, even, even 100 years ago. So a long way to go, a lot of metal consumption yet to, yet to, uh, to be seen, and, and this will drive metal prices, especially silver, because, of course, silver spans the gamut. 
uh, for a long time to come. I'm very bullish on all metals, particularly silver. State's first ever investment opportunity for silver bullion. The bars are available in 500 grams, a 1 kilogram, 2 kilograms, and 5 kilograms with a purity of 99.9%. Figures show that gold was 50 times more extensive than silver in 2007. But now that figures has reached to over 70 times, the highest in the past five years. And they say that silver has been undervalued in recent years. They add that the metal is a wise investment for individual investors and could be a good way to cash in. We are the first to offer silver bullion as an investment opportunity. The price for the first batch of the bullion is set very low, close to the cost of the raw material. The investment threshold is not high and is more suitable for the general public. Silver is much cheaper than gold.